everybody very warm welcome to vedant j english channel andarike namaskaram ellarku swagatham this is me your master teacher nagopita bharajaji and today i am here with the second part two of basically yes the second part or part two of coordination compound yes i thought that in the previous session we had a you know overdose of knowledge <laughs> overdose of concepts so i thought that i'll do it in two parts so that you know everything is crystal clear to you and in today's session we are going to answer some of the questions that warner's theory could not explain all right so are you all with me are you all with me everybody shall we start with the session let's go ahead without much further ado let's uh, let's complete the session today let's completely talk about what were the things that warner's theory could not explain and and whatever happened right basically we are going to take a look at valence bond theory we are going to take a look at uh, the crystal field theory we are going to understand what is inner orbital what is outer orbital how the crystal field splitting happens and all of that that we probably have not studied in the previous session okay so now like i said that warner's theory could not explain very basic questions like you know why only certain elements why is it that only some of the elements they have this remarkable property of formation of coordination bond why is it that not all the elements form coordination bond right yes that is something that it he could not explain apart from that he also could not explain that why the bonds formed in coordination uh, compounds have directional properties directional properties why do they have directional properties it could not explain it also could not explain that why coordination compounds have characteristic magnetic and optical properties right and that is why my dear students and this is the reason why we have to move forward and understand what is valence bond theory now to be able to understand what valence bond theory is first of all let's understand that what is hybrid because this is one term that we will be studying about in this chapter okay what is hybrid or hybridization you understand what is hybrid everybody do you know what is hybrid let me tell you you must have heard about it right that rose and marigold were uh, mixed up or jasmine and rose were mixed up mixed up and there was a beautiful flower that came out which smells also very wonderful and everything right have you heard of these things or you know how that uh, you know people people say that uh, you know uh, uh, what, what do you say like uh, uh, cabbage and cauliflower was mixed up and then you formed a new vegetables right that is hybrid hybrid is basically what mixing up of certain things and uh, making it into sim ma making it similar right right so using the same analogy now using the same analogy everybody let's let's try to understand that how is it possible in case of metals and ligands why are they getting hybridized why why i mean even in today's generation you have hybrid cars right you have ev evs are those which run on electricity you have uh, the petrol ones you have the diesel ones and you also have the hybrid cars what happens in the hybrid cars the hybrid cars can switch so usually it runs on uh, you know ev or, or or it probably runs on solar energy but then let's just say that the charge is over and you still have to go somewhere at that point of time it will switch and it will start running on petrol right okay great now we know that the central metal atom okay the central metal atom yes in in a coordination compound not in a coordination compound the metal atoms are what the metal atoms have you know 3d series 4d series and all of that right the metal atoms have d orbitals correct the metal atoms have d orbitals and the d orbitals sometimes are completely occupied in in case of zinc it is completely occupied but in case of scandium to nickel copper yes it's not completely filled there are empty spaces in those orbitals and for now let's consider the orbitals to be rooms right how like you have a room you have a room in your own house your parents have a room your sibling probably has a room right and when somebody comes you sometimes have to shift your room and if let, let's just say that if you are a younger sibling you might have to shift to your elder brothers or elder sisters room has this happened to you that guests are coming so your parents are like beta can you please shift they do that no <laughs> exactly now 
the central metal atom, the empty orbitals that it has, right? A central metal atom has, uh, you know, 3D, 4S, right? Sometimes it has 4P, right? So these are the orbitals that it has. These are the orbitals that it has, correct? And these orbitals, now you know that we call, we call the, we call, we call 4S to be maybe the penultimate shell, which is just just behind the 3d series yes just behind the 3d orbital 3d orbital is the ultimate shell in in case in case the metal belongs to 3d series in case the metal is scandium or titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron nickel cobalt copper or or zinc right if it is one of these metal do you understand that it has a 3d orbital it has a 4s orbital 3d is supposed to be the ultimate that is the last shell that's what we are expecting it to have, right? So, 4S becomes the penultimate shell, like right? just before the ultimate shell, right? 4S becomes the penultimate shell. Correct? Correct, everybody. Understanding this much, you are clear with? Great. Now, in your house, tell me something that the living room, your parents' bedroom, your bedroom, your siblings' bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, are all the rooms of the same size? Are all the rooms of the same size? No, right, bacha? No, right? That isn't possible, correct? Yeah? Yeah? So that means that if, like, let's say that guests come, guests come, and they are like, we want to stay in the biggest room possible. What will you do? What will you do? You won't be able to give them that room. What if it is the, uh, what if it is your room that is the biggest? How will you do that? How will you do that? You cannot. And very similarly, very similarly, these metals, they are also like, why should I just give away my room? Yeah, because some guests are coming. They don't want to, right? But they have to because they are metals and ligand, ligands are approaching. So they cannot help it, right? So what they do is, what they do is, they empty their shell. When the ligands are approaching, what they do is, they empty their shell. Again, using the same analogy, if guests are coming, what would you do? When you are shifting to, let's say, your elder brother or elder sister's room, you have to shift. Guests are coming, there is no extra room, you have to shift to your elder sister or your elder brother's room. Before you shift, won't you take, let's just say that you have a PS5 in the room. Won't you take the PS5 and go to your elder brother's or elder sister room? I mean, that is probably the most, most, uh, you know, the most beloved thing of yours, right? You will also take your towel, your brush, basically all the basic necessities that you will require every day. You will take those things and then you will move out of the room, isn't it? Yes, very similarly, the metals. What they do is, they empty the orbital. They empty the orbitals. Then they hybridize it. Basically, they bring all the orbitals in the same energy level. 4S, 3D, 4P. They will hybridize it. They will put it all in the same energy level. And then they will be like, ha ha, ligand. Welcome, 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 welcome. See the room? See, it is so big. We have just cleaned it up for you. They do all of that natak, okay? Yeah, I mean, these are all my expressions, but yeah. You can believe that they also do such nata, okay? They also do such a drama in their bond formation and everything. You getting my point? So this, my dear student, in the layman's term, I have just explained you valence bond theory. Valence bond theory, if I have to, if I have to uh, just explain it to you in three sentences, I will say the metal empties the orbital, second, hybridizes it, third, gives it to the ligand and says that, hey, welcome to the rooms. Got my point? What are the three things that I said? Metal empties the orbital, hybridizes it, welcomes the ligand. That's it. That's your valence bond theory. I'm not even kidding. Absolutely. I'm not even kidding. Yes. Now, before we understand anything else, do you understand the difference between the coordinate bond and the covalent bond? You, we have all studied about ionic bond. We have all studied about covalent bond. Remember, polar covalent bond, non-polar covalent bond. We have studied about all of these things, isn't it? Yes, we have. Correct? Okay, great. Now, in case of covalent bond, what happens is, okay, let's give you an example. I have given this example even when before I taught coordination compound. At that time also, I have given this example. But let's just use the same example once again, okay? So before I joined Vedantu, I used to be a school teacher. 
and I used to teach in uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar Vidya Mandir, Art of Living thing, you know, Art of Living Ravi Shankar. Yes, so I used to teach in that school. And uh, you know, uh, my, my day used to start very early, 6.30, 6.30 in the morning, the bus of the school actually used to be there in front of my house and I had to get up in the bus at 6.30. It was that early. So there were times when I used to not be able to make my uh, lunch or my breakfast and I used to just get up, brush my teeth, get ready and go to the school, right? Yeah. So I used to not take any tiffin. But the students in my class, they were oh so sweet, so sweet, right? They were. What they used to do, you know, they used to like, they used to be like, ma'am, you did not bring anything. Come sit with us. We will all have our lunch together. So they used to give me their food. They used to share it with me. And we both used to eat. And after that, nobody has to know. Now, my stomach does not know who gave the food, right? My stomach just knows that, yeah, we are full, we are happy. Correct? Yes. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So there was basically nothing that I could give them. Nothing I could give them. There was nothing that I could give them. So that, my dear student, is, is the bond formation that happens here, okay? That is the bond formation that we are talking about. And remember when I gave you this example of a polar covalent bond where my brother and I used to fight for the remote and I used to take it from him and there was, you know, that was electrons. I took the remote from him. I was happier. Yes. So what was the direction? Yes. Dipole moment. We read about all of these things. Do you remember? Do you remember? What did I do? I took the remote from him. I took the remote from him. He, bichara, he does not have anything. We did form a bond. We fought. But our parents don't know for what reason we fought. No? Our parents don't know because our parents were not there. But they can see that his hands are empty. My, mine is full with the remote. Yes. And that is your covalent bond. That is your covalent bond. But in case of coordinate bond, understand this way. That now what I did was another day I had, let's say, uh, chips. I had banana chips. I had banana chips. And I took it to the school so this time of course i did not have lunch i did not have lunch lunch like i did not have rice or chapati or parota something like that i did not have but i had banana chips so what i did was i shared it with my students and the students they shared their tiffin with me so basically all of us were full and happy happy that was coordinate bond now nobody knows that from where the banana chips came and nobody knows from where the tiffin came our stomachs are all happy that is your coordinate bond now, nobody knows what really happened there. Getting my point, covalent bond is when it is absolutely empty and there is something that is coming here. Okay, all right, yes, correct. Coordinate is basically when I also shared, you also shared, whatever we did not have, we both shared and that's how we formed a bond. That is your coordinate bond and that is exactly what happens. For that bond formation, now what did the metal do? The metal had electrons in its own orbitals. It had. But before it could give the rooms to ligand, it said that, sure, we will share. We will share. We will share. But I'm going to empty the orbitals, shift this here, and then you can come and fill up the room. Getting my point? Getting what I'm saying? Yes? Great. Okay. So the central metal atom or the metal ion, it has a number of empty orbitals. In which it can accommodate the electrons. Who is going to who is going to give those electrons? The ligands, when they approach, they are going to give the electrons, right? The formation of the complex, right? It involves a reaction between Lewis base. Who are the Lewis base? Ligands are Lewis base. Okay. Ligand is a Lewis base. Remember this? Ligand is a Lewis base. And the metal is a Lewis acid. Yeah, metal is a Lewis acid. Cool, okay, all right, yes. Now with the formation of this coordinate or covalent bond between them, right? That, that is how they're forming the bond. And this, this, when this happens, I, I just told you, right? They have what? N minus 1D, they have NS, they have NP or they have NS, NP or ND orbitals, right? Right, yes which does not, all of them does not have the same equivalent en energy. They do not have equivalent energy. So what they will do is they will empty it. Then they will hybridize. They will bring it all together to the same energy level. 
and then they will be like yes fill it up then what will happen they will overlap the ligand and the metal they will overlap take a look at it take a look at it what is happening see there is a vacant metal hybrid orbital yes now they have hybridized it it's in the same level now see what is happening the ligand orbital it the ligand has a pair of electron let's say okay the ligand has a pair of electron here let's say that the ligand has a pair of electron here okay now see what is happening after some time now see what is happening here check it out check it out guys everybody now what has happened now the metal and the ligand they have overlapped like this they have overlapped when they have overlapped now can you figure it out here who gave the electron because we know the back story we know that yes it was the ligand who gave the electron the ligand was the one who donated the electron but just if you just look at this picture will you be able to tell that yeah 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 it must have been the ligand only you cannot right you cannot why because the bond formation has already happened and this my dear students is your valence bond theory clear i've told you a huge story about valence bond theory i hope you are clear about it now let's take a look at what are the uh, you know once they have hybridized how do they share the space yes what is the distribution of hybrid orbitals in space like how is it arranged in the space let's let's understand this so let's say that if the coordination number is 4 yes if the coordination number is 4 that means there are four ligands attached to the metal if the coordination number is 4 then it will form an sp3 hybridization that is one s orbital and three pp orbitals will come together share their energy levels they will make make sure that their energy levels are in the same space yes and then the distribution of the hybrid orbitals in space will be obviously tetrahedral okay this will be tetrahedral then comes four four with coordination number four there is also a possibility of dsp2 there is a possibility of d orbital 1d orbital 1s orbital and 2p orbital okay that way you will get a square planar please remember this okay sp3 tetrahedral dsp2 square planar sp3 tetrahedral dsp2 square planar you have to remember this very important then comes if the coordination number is 5 then it will form sp3d and the shape will be trigonal bipyramidal if it is 6 coordination number then it can form sp3d2 or it can form d2 sp3 yes and both of these cases it will be octahedral octahedral but now we come to another another um, you know theory which is called as the inner orbital theory or outer orbital what are these complexes i mean not theory inner orbital complexes or outer orbital complexes what does our common sense say bachcha our common sense says common sense says that inner orbital that means the inner inner shells the inner shells are taken care of if it is outer that means the outer shells are taken care of right Got, getting it okay so when i say here that this is your sp3d the sp3d2 so we are talking about a octahedral geometry coordination number 6 that means there are six ligands attached it forms sp3d2 this is your hybridization correct hybridization here is sp3d2 or d2 sp3 So first of all, we are talking about sp three d two. If it is sp three d two, this, my dear students, is called as outer orbital complex. Outer orbital complex. I'll give you a very clear idea about it. We will solve some examples, and that's when you will understand. And this forms d two sp three. When it is d two sp three, what will it form? When it is d two sp three, it is going to be inner orbital. complex it will form inner orbital complex getting my point yes is this all clear now let's solve some examples so that we understand this better okay now let's understand that what is inner orbital and outer orbital acha so we are taking an example of okay we are taking an example of which way should i move yeah this way this way, this way. let's move this way yeah so let's take an example of co nh363 plus listen to me very carefully cobalt what is the atomic number of cobalt 
scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt. Cobalt is 27. If it is 27, then the outermost electronic configuration should be 3D74S2. Yeah, okay, great. Now I can see that the complex formed here is CONH363+. So first of all, let's find out the oxidation state of cobalt. Yeah, I think that, that is the only thing that makes sense, right? Let's find out the oxidation state. How do we find oxidation state? Let's consider cobalt to be X+. plus. I know that NH3 is a neutral ligand. I have given you the list already, so you know. NH3 is a neutral ligand. So, 6 multiplied with 0 and overall charge here is plus 3. Yes, so that means X is, is equal to plus 3. Correct? Now, cobalt in its normal state. Cobalt, this is my cobalt. Cobalt in its normal state. Cobalt without any oxidation state, yes, normal state, cobalt will have 3D74S2, right? So let's draw it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. 3D7 and then 4S2. Make sense? Works? Okay. Now let's take into consideration, now let's take into consideration cobalt in plus 3 state. If it is in plus 3 state, these two will go and this one will go, right? So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, 5 and 6. It was 3D7 but it will be 3D6 now. There will be nothing in the 4S, right? Now it has, see, it has emptied its orbital, okay? It has emptied its orbital. But do you see that NH3, there are 6 NH3 that are approaching. 6 NH3 is approaching. How many empty orbitals do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Only 4. So that means cobalt still needs to empty more orbitals. Right? So what it will do is it will push the electrons like this. It will push the electrons like this. So there will be pairing up basically. Okay? There will be pairing up. And how will it pair up? See? Check it out here. It will take this away, take this away and then it will pair it up like this, okay? Now, how many how many orbitals are empty? See, now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 orbitals are empty. Now, do you, do you think that all the NH3 can come and take, take care of, take the rooms? Yes, they can fill up the rooms? Yes, now NH3 will come, check it out. So, now cobalt with CONH3, 6. 3 plus. Now what will happen? See. Now, I'm going to draw the cobalt electrons like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And now NH3 is going to come. So NH3 from each NH3 from each NH3 cobalt is going to get 2 electrons. So that means 12 electrons are to fill. So 12 electrons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And what is the hybridization here? What do you see? Don't you see that it is D2, SP3, 2 orbitals of 2 D orbitals, 1 S orbital and 3 P, so D2, SP3. And do you see how these inner shells were emptied? How these inner orbitals were emptied for NH3 to come and take, take over? Did you see? So that means that inner orbitals were emptied. So can I call this as inner orbital complex? Can I call this as inner orbital complex? I think I can. I think I can. Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to you that this is my inner orbital complex? This is the inner orbital complex that I was talking to you about. And do you also see at the at right here, right here, do you see are there any unpaired electrons? Are there any unpaired electrons? None at all. So does it make sense that this complex is diamagnetic? Because we know that magnetic properties are exhibited when there is a unpaired electron. Okay, there is an unpaired electron. Okay. Now here is another term that I would like to introduce you to. This, this complex is also called as a low spin. It's also called as a low spin complex. Okay. Let's understand. So guys, imagine if I have a completely empty room. 
completely empty room and I am the only one in that room. There is no table, no chair, no bed, nothing at all. Don't you think that I can spin very fast? I can be like, whoa, I can spin. What will you call me? High spin. Yes. Now look here. Look here. All the electrons are paired. There are two, two people. There are two people in each room. And imagine it's a very chuttu room. There are two people plus there are other things as well. Now see, I have a table right in front of me. Can I spin? I cannot spin. I have a mic that is connected to the laptop. Can I spin? I cannot spin. What, what am I going to call myself? Low spin. But if there was nothing in front of me, no camera, nothing, I was not teaching you. What will I do? What do you think I do? When I don't have, when, when I'm not teaching, what do I do? I dance sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I do dance. Right? I go all crazy like woohoo. So high spin. In a class, I'm supposed to maintain the decorum because I'm a teacher. Low spin. Outside, high spin. You're getting my point? So here also see this, everybody is paired. Low spin. If they were not paired and if there was empty orbitals, if they were unpaired, yes, what do we call it? Maybe high spin. Okay, so let's check it out now. Let's check it out. Let's take another example, okay? Let's take another example. This time, let's take the example of COF6. That is cobalt with fluorine. All right? Yes, cobalt with fluorine. So once again, once again, <clears throat> Let me drink some water, guys. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah, as I was telling you, ha, huh, as I was telling you, cobalt, let's count again scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt. Yes, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Okay. Cobalt is. 27, 27, that means 3D, 7, 4, S2. So, cobalt in its normal state, cobalt in its normal state will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? And then 4, S2, right? Okay. Great, great, cool. Okay. Now, this time, cobalt is in oxidation state. Let's find out the oxidation state. Cobalt is X plus F. Fluorine has one negative charge, right? So 6 into minus 1 is equal to minus 3. That means that x is, is equal to plus 3. So once again, once again, now what will happen? Cobalt in plus 3. CO, CO plus 3 oxidation state. What will happen? 2 from here will go and 1 from here will go. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. That many electrons, right? That many electrons, great. Six electrons. Now, how many six, how many six, uh, sorry, how many six it seems, huh? How many fluorine atoms are coming? Six of them are coming, right? So now see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine rooms that are empty. There are already nine rooms that are empty. This time, do you think that, acha, tell me, if you have a big house, you have a 6 BHK house. Guests, if guests come, will you be asked to shift? Will you be asked to sh shift? No. Or let's take another example. Imagine if you have a small car like Alto, and if, if by chance that six people come into the car, one of them will have to sit on the lap. And especially you, Chotu Bachus, you will have to sit on the lap, right? But if you have a big car, now let's say that you have a, 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 a big car. What is a big car? What is a big? Ha, you have a Bolero or Scorpio or something where already you know uh, ten people can sit. So ten people can sit. Now if you have six people in the car, nobody has to sit on somebody's lap, right? Everybody will take their own space. I'm like, no, no, I will sit in the back. I'll sit in the back because you can like you know keep your legs up and everything. You, you will do that. So very similarly, this time when fluorine is approaching nobody shifts nobody shifts so co f6 three minus complex remains one two three four five and six one two three four five six and then now see what fluorine does fluorine comes here and takes this space 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 and takes this space so one two one two three four five six 
this time the hybridization becomes you can tell me i think you can tell me guys i think you can tell me what is the hybridization here this will be sp3d2 and this time do you see that fluorine is utilizing the outer orbital it is not used utilizing 3d it is utilizing 4d orbitals that is on the outside so what am i going to call it can i call it as outer orbital complex this will be my outer orbital complex yes absolutely and now my dear students check out another thing do you see that this is unpaired electron this is unpaired electron this is unpaired electron this is unpaired electron what will they do woohoo spin 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 so what am i going to call it can i call it as high spin can i call it as high spin complex of course i can and because there are unpaired electrons does it make sense that this is paramagnetic it will show magnetic behavior there will be magnetism that we will get to see so paramagnetic everything makes sense the story is completely like full proof makes sense everybody great awesome 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 all right okay now we come to so with this note we are done with coordination number 6 now we have to take a look at coordination number 4 for coordination number 4 you have sp3 this sp3 if if it is sp3 hybridization the shape that it forms as we know is a tetrahedral and this is my dear students your outer orbital complex yes but if it forms dsp2 if it forms dsp2 it forms the shape is square planar and this time it is going to be inner orbital complex gotcha is this clear to everybody are you understanding what i'm trying to teach you does it make sense and do you do you think that coordination compound is now very easy hmm awesome now let's solve some examples for coordination number 4 let's do it okay now let's try to solve it for nickel nicl42 minus okay so what is the atomic number for nickel once again let's count you know what i told you sachin tendulkar very crazy man free coaching nicks cousin so scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel 28 so 28 means it will be 3d8 4s2 in its normal state let's also try to find out the oxidation state right away for this okay let's consider this to be x plus 4 into minus 1 because cl has minus 1 charge yes is equal to overall charge i can see is minus 2 so that means that x is equal to plus 2 plus 2 is the oxidation state all right so let's consider nickel in its normal form zero oxidation yeah normal state in its normal state it will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 1 2 4s2 right done but now i know that nickel is supposed to be in plus 2 oxidation state plus 2 means this 4s will go away 4s will go away so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 3d8 it still has 3d8 and i can see that there are four chlorine atoms that are trying to approach nickel do i have enough room do i have enough room see 1 2 3 4 i do i do have so what am i going to do is ni cl4 2 minus if i do so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and, and what am i going to do is i'm going to bring here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 eight, eight electrons from chlorine has come and they have taken the place yes so what is the hybridization this is a no brainer everybody knows this is sp3 hybridization sp3 hybridization i can see that there are two unpaired electrons if there are two unpaired electrons does it make sense that this is paramagnetic if it is paramagnetic and there is sp3 orbit hybridization sp3 hybridization bole to what is it this is an outer orbital complex am i right this is outer orbital and because this is paramagnetic and there are unpaired electrons what am i going to call it i'm going to call it as a high spin complex correct i'm going to call it a high spin complex makes sense everybody full proof story everybody got it clear hai cool 
चलो मूविंग ऑन नाउ मूविंग ऑन नाउ वी हैव एन आई सी एन फोर टू माइनस ओके एन आई सी एन फोर वंस अगेन निकल्स अटोमिक नंबर इज ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी एट बोले तो थ्री डी एट एंड फोर एस टू लेट्स कैलकुलेट द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट एक्स प्लस सी एन ऑल्सो हैज अ माइनस वन चार्ज सो प्लस फोर इन टू माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू दैट मीन्स दैट एक्स इज इक्वल टू प्लस टू यस सो निकल इन इट्स नॉर्मल स्टेट विल बी वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एंड एट एंड फोर एस टू राइट But I know that nickel is in plus two state, right? Nickel in is in plus two state. If it is plus two, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Yes. Now, how many C C N C N is going to come here, right? C N has one, two, three, four. Four rooms are there. Four rooms are there. But do you know those kind of relatives who just Randomly wants to poke you and make you angry and just make your life not very, uh, very happy, right? Have you have you met those kind of relatives who are like, "Bit are you studying? What are you studying for? J? Oh no, Nita. Why didn't you take biology? Those kind of relatives are there. C N consider C N to be like that. Okay, so what C N does, you know, what C N does, you know, C N will still try to push it here. C N will still try to push it here, and that means that what will we get here? We will get an empty orbital here, and this will come here. So one empty orbital we get here. Now N I C N four two minus for this complex we will have one two three four five six seven N eight yes, and then C N will come and C N will take the place of one two three four and five six and seven eight. and this time once again what is the uh, what is the hybridization the hybridization is d s p 2 what will be the shape the shape will be square planar shape will be square planar what do i call this this will be my outer no sorry this will be my inner orbital complex why inner orbital because see cn is also trying to take the inner orbital right so this will be my inner orbital complex Yes, and this time, do I also say that there are none of them which are unpaired? So, uh, if there are no unpaired electrons, diamagnetic, and if there are no unpaired electrons, I will also call it to be low spin complex. Make sense? This is also this is a low spin complex. Does it all make sense, everybody? Yep, easy peasy, absolutely right. Everybody understanding what I'm trying to explain? Every one of you are explain understanding? Yes. Okay, great. Then shut. Now let's solve a question. What do you all say? Let's solve a question, everybody. Sure. So we have the question. Okay. So this was the question where I stopped in the last session. I stopped at this question. I did not do this question because I thought that I had to tell you this story, and only then it will make sense if I actually solve the question. Okay. All right, everybody. So let's solve it then. Let's solve it now. Okay. So first of all, let's do it for NiCN four. NiCN four, we have just done it. That NiCN four is tetrahedral. No, it is square planar, right? Yes. So that means that this is wrong. This is wrong because I see that this this itself is wrong, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. We have just done it. We have just done it. Great. Now let's solve it for NiCl four. What do you all say? Shall we Shall we do it for NiCl four then? The option B. Yeah. Let's do it for NiCl four two minus. Chalo. Arey. Okay, no problem. Ah. N I C L four two minus. Yes, and this also we have done. See N I C L four two minus. This is paramagnetic. This is paramagnetic. Yeah, this is paramagnetic. Great. And N I C O four is N I C O four. Chal. N I C O four. Let's do it. N I C L four is. Oh. This is paramagnetic. This is paramagnetic. Let's do it for NiCO4. Okay, for NiCO4, what will it be? Nickel is in. Nickel is in. Twenty-eight is the atomic number, so three D eight and four S two. Let's find out the oxidation state here. Okay, let's find out the oxidation state, everybody. If you are not able to see, I'm so sorry. Let me move here. I, I it just tried. It just. you know i just understood yes that you probably are not able to see 
So X will be, CO is a neutral ligand. CO is a neutral ligand. A ligand. So 4 into 0 is equal to 0, right? Because there is no overall charge. So no oxidation state. That means that it will be, I will have to draw it as 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? Then I will have to draw 4 as so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and then 4 as 2. Yes. Now what CO will do, you know, what CO will do is CO will push these electrons here. CO will push these electrons here. That means that I will have, I will have, uh, will I have DSP2? No. Yeah, right. So, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because now 4S is empty. And obviously, there will also be 4P3. So, 4S and 4P will be taken into consideration. So, the hybridization becomes SP3. If it is SP3, then what is the geometry? It will be tetrahedral. It will be tetrahedral, correct? So, that means that option B makes sense. Option B is correct. Check it out. Option B is correct. Now, do you understand why I said that we will solve it later? See, now everything is crystal clear in front of you. Option B is the correct answer. Okay. All right. And is this going to be paramagnetic? No. Everything is paired. This is going to be diamagnetic. Right. This is going to be diamagnetic. But NiCl4 is paramagnetic. So, yes, option B is absolutely Correct. Okay. Option B is absolutely correct, my dear students. Okay. Everybody got it clear? Chalo. Let's try to solve the next question then. Yeah. The next question is the total number of possible isomers for square planar PTCl, NO2, NO3, SC and 2 minus. Okay. Okay. Let's just write it down here. PTCl, NO2. NO2, NO3, SCN, 2 minus. But choose, tell me that does this look like, does this look like M, A, B, C, D type of complex, right? And if it is M, A, B, C, D, then we know that it will have usually three geometrical isomers are possible. Three geometrical isomers are possible. But, but, I see that there are two ambidentate ligands here. There is one that is SCN. SCN is an ambidentate ligand. And so is NO2, right? So, if one ambidentate ligand is there, if one ambidentate ligand is present, for one ambidentate ligand, two into three, because it can donate both the sides, right? So, that means if one ambidented ligand, so 2 into 3 is equal to 6 GI possible. 6 GI possible. But here I see that if there are two ambidented ligand, but now I can see that in this case, there are two ambidented ligand, guys. If there are two ambidented ligand, that means four donor sites have, four donor sites or four alternatives are possible. Four options are possible just because of the ambidentate ligand. But I already know that there are three geometrical isomers possible. So, can I do 4 multiplied by 3 is equal to 12? So, 12 geometrical isomers are possible. That means that option B is the one that is correct. Does it make sense? Please check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Correlate your answers and see if this is what you got. Come on guys. Tell them I am going to drink some water. But you let me know that does this make sense to you what I explained. Hmm? Easy peasy biryani tasty right yes moving on to the next question then okay moving on to the next question now here is a cheat sheet or, or a trick that I want to give it to you okay let me give you a trick here what is the trick that I am going to yes what is the trick the trick is that this is the only trick but there is this is one of the disadvantage actually. So we saw that NH3, EN, CN minus and CO. These ligands, they were 
pushing. They were those kind of relatives who were like, oh, Peta, you studied for JE. Why not NEET? Why didn't you take biology? What would have happened if you took biology? I have heard biology is easy, no? They are these relatives who pushes the electrons and they make them pair up. They don't like freedom, basically. They don't like high spin and all. They're like, hey, why, 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 what would you do with the uh, one whole room? Huh? Pair up. Till push. And we saw that I minus or, uh, you know, Br minus, Cl minus, F minus, H2O. These were like, you know, very chill relatives. They were like, oh, oh sure. You want some free rooms for yourself? Sure, go ahead. You can use the room. No problem. They are these. So this is where we are stopping valence bond theory. But now we have to understand that valence bond theory is not away from disadvantages. But before we understand the disadvantages, here's one last slight thing that I want to tell you. That is magnetic properties of coordination compounds. Okay. What are the magnetic properties of coordination compound? We know we have seen that there are complexes which are diamagnetic and there are complexes which are paramagnetic. Right. We saw that. Yes. Correct? We have seen that. So, in case of diamagnetism, when, when does diamagnetism come up? Diamagnetism comes up when there is no magnetism. No magnetism. That means that they have zero unpaired electrons. There are no unpaired electrons. Zero unpaired electrons. Okay? In case of paramagnetism, we know that there is magnetic properties that are magnetism that means magnetic properties are exhibited by the complex and we know that here unpaired electrons are there unpaired electrons are present yes and that means that of course there is a formula no bacha yes one formula case yeah what is the formula everybody knows i guess it's mu is equal to root over n n plus 2 and the unit is bm that is bore magneton okay it is bore magneton so rotate everybody check it out yes this is the formula clear hey everyone understanding all is cool all is well yes clinical clear yes say la 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 say epbt say something write it down in the chat box so that i know that you guys are understanding okay all right everybody chill now let's understand the limitations that is as i was telling you valence bond theory is not away from disadvantages which is why we have to study about another theory <laughs> i have to teach you you have to learn sorry guys i can't help it i didn't make the chapter i did not bring the chapter to you it was alfred warner <laughs> you know who to scold right chill now so valence bond theory we kept assuming a lot of things, you know. We kept assuming a lot of things. We don't really know that what is real, what is not. We kept just assuming. We are like, ah, oh, this, this CN, CN must be that relative who will push everyone. How do we know that? How do we know that? We don't know that, right? So we kept assuming a lot of things, right? And it does not give a qualitative interpretation. Although I have told you about the formula here, but to be very honest, in this case, we actually did not learn the formula, okay? In this case, we did not learn the formula because there was no qualitative. Yes, there was, there, it, it, I mean, no, not qualitative. There was no quantity. Yes, we did not know that what actually is the magnetic moment that this complex is. Through. We did not know about that. Yes, we did not know. And then there are complexes which have colors, right? There are complexes which are blue, there are complexes which are purple, there are complexes which are violet, there are complexes which are yellow. It does not speak about the color at all. Doesn't make sense to us then, right? It does not give a quantitative interpretation of the thermodynamic or the kinetic stabilities of coordination compounds. We have seen that coordination compounds sometimes are quite stable they are thermodynamic sta uh, thermodynamically stable they are kinetically stable uh, they, they are stable and there is no reason as to why they are stable nothing that balance bond theory could speak up right it does not make exact predictions regarding the tetrahedral and the square planar structures of four coordinate complexes yes so i have told you now what is correct what is wrong and uh, you know what is square planar what is tetrahedral but actually when you study from valence bond theory you would not be able to they were just predictions like ah this must have been this thing ah this must have been this thing actually what they did was those who make valence bond theory they cheated they cheated you know what they did they first theoretically calculated not theoretically sorry experimentally they calculated the magnetic moment and then they were like yeah this must have this many unpaired electrons that's what they did 
that's what they did okay and then finally we come to the last point that is it does not distinguish between the weak and the strong field ligands like i told you cl is a strong field ligand how do we know cl minus is a weak field ligand how do we know water is a weak field ligand how do we know nh3 is a strong field ligand how do we know from valence bond theory nobody spoke to us nobody spoke to us it also did not tell us that which complexes are outer orbital which complexes are inner orbital in fact that why why is this one outer orbital why is that one inner orbital that also it could not explain which is why let's gear up for the next theory that is crystal fill theory but before that let's solve some questions yeah questions 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 are the only thing that can get us our dream iit so let's solve it yeah what is the correct order of spin only magnetic moments among the following okay all right guys so i'm gonna stand here and let's solve it so first of all let's do it for zn cl4 2 minus now we know that zn has an atomic number of 30 okay yes if it is 30 that means it is 3d 10 4s2 yes and now from here i will find out the oxidation state of uh, zn that is x plus 4 into minus 1 is equal to minus 2 that means that x is, is equal to plus 2 even if it is plus 2 that means 4s2 will go away 4s2 electrons will go away right if 4s2 electrons go away 3d10 all paired na all paired na bachu so what will be the magnetic moment here zero for z in cl4 it is zero now let's do it for nicl4 nicl4 2 minus yes nickel is 28 correct hmm? scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel 28 28 means it is 3d8 and 4s2 and I can clearly see that this will also be, nickel will also be in plus 2 oxidation state. If it is plus 2 oxidation state, so 4s will go away. If 4s goes away, that means 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. This is how it is. There are two unpaired electrons. So that means that the magnetic moment will be 2 point something something. I think it will be 2.84 or something like that. Yeah, 2.84 or something like that. Now let's calculate it for CO. For CO, Cl4 2 minus, we know that cobalt is equal to cobalt, then nickel, right? So 27, 27 means it is 3D7, 4S2. Once again, from here, I can see that it is in plus 2 oxidation state. So 4S electrons will go away. I can draw it only for 3D7. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and 7. 3 unpaired electrons. So magnetic moment will be 3 point. I'm guessing 8, 9. I think it is 3.89. I'll tell you that that trick also. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that trick that how am I calculating this so fast. I'll tell you that. Many of you probably do know, but I will still tell you, okay? Then comes MnCl4 2 minus. Mn, uh, atomic number is 25, right? Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, 25. 25 means 3D5, 4S2. 5 unpaired electrons because 4S will go 5 unpaired electrons. So, magnetic moment will be around 5 point, 5 point, I think, um, 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 it will be around 5 point. 8.2. Again, guessing. Just guessing. But 5 point something definitely. So that means that manganese will have the highest. Then comes your cobalt. Then comes nickel. Then comes Zn. So that means that option D is the correct answer. Please check it out if this is correct. Please check it out everybody. Yes. And now coming back to the trick that I told you. The trick everybody is. Okay. The trick everybody is. Please write it down here write it down here okay what is the trick number of unpaired electrons almost equal to magnetic moment 0 0.75 more generally generally the magnetic moment is 
0.75 more than the number of unpaired electrons. Are you getting my point? This is the trick. This is the trick. Yes? The magnetic moment is usually almost equal to number of unpaired electrons, but it is just 0.75 or generally, generally, not all the times, not all the times. Don't take it as a rule rule. It's just a trick for you to be able to solve the questions faster. Okay. It's just a trick guys. Again, please don't take it as a rule. This is just a general trick. Okay. All right. Everybody understood. Yes. So option D is the correct answer. Option D is the correct answer. All right. Got it clear. Chalo. Moving on. Next question. The pair having the same magnetic moment is. Which pair has the same magnetic moment? They are. They have also given you the atomic number. Atomic number for chromium is 24. Manganese is 25. Iron is 26. And cobalt is 27. So generally, again, in JEE paper, generally you will see that yes, they have given you the atomic number. However, it is good to know the first series of D block elements all of their atomic number and all of their electronic configuration. You should be able to tell. Scandium 21. What is the electronic configuration? 3D1, 4S2. Okay. Titanium 22. What is the electronic configuration? 3D2, 4S2. Vanadium 23. What is the electronic configuration? 3D3, 4S2. Chromium. What is the atomic number? 24. What is the electronic configuration? This is an exception, guys. Please take a look. Please have a look. What is the exception? This time it will be 3D5, 4S1. Why? Because D orbitals and the P orbitals, they prefer to have a half filled orbital or a fully filled orbital. They like having stability in their life. And that's why now 3D, D has a capacity of holding 10 electrons. 5 means half filled. Half filled will be more stable. So they like it. Okay. So they like it. Got it? Clear? Chal. Now let's solve this everybody. Let's solve this, okay? Pair having the same magnetic moment. Same magnetic moment we need, okay? How do we calculate same magnetic moment? Chalo. For Cr, H2O, 6, 2 plus. H2O is a neutral ligand. H2O is a neutral ligand and Cr has an atomic number of 24, which is basically, I just told you, 3D5, 4S1. Cr, H2O, 6, 2 plus. So clearly, X plus 0 is equal to plus 2. That means one from here gone, one from here go, gone. That means four. Uh, check it out, guys. See. CR is in plus two state. So CR plus two is equal to 3D4 it will be. For 3D4, how do I make it? One, two, three, four, and five. So one, two, three, four. All unpaired electrons? Yes. So what will be the Bohr magnet on? Four point something something. 4.89, 4.75, 4.79, 4 4.82. Let's just say 4.82. I can calculate it also. N, N plus 2. I can calculate, use a calculator. But this is what I know. It is 4.82. Something like that it will be. Correct? Okay. Great. We understood this. Now for COCl, let's find out. For COCl, 4, 2, minus. Again, we know that CO has an atomic number. What? Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, 27. Do you know why I am calculating? Not because I don't know. I know that there will be some students who will be like, she doesn't know concept. Ma'am doesn't know. That's why she is counting. I am only doing this again and again. So that every time I say it, it gets in your head. And you learn it. Okay. CO has an atomic number. Are, 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 are. CO has an atomic number of 27. 27 means 3D7, 4S2. I can clearly say that this will also be in plus 2 state. So plus 2 means 4s2 gone. 4s2 gone. So 3d7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 3 unpaired electrons. 3 unpaired electrons. So Bohr magneton. 3 point something something Bohr magneton. Option A is definitely not the correct answer. Let's do it for Fe, CRH206. We already know that it is 4 point something something. Now for Fe, let's do it. FeH206, 2 plus. Same like that. Fe will be in plus 2 state. Fe in plus 2 state is what? Normally Fe is 26 atomic number. 26 means 3D6, 4S2. Now that we are saying that it is plus 2 state, that means it will be 3D6. 
3d6 how can i draw my dear students one two three four five so one two three four five and six four unpaired electrons four unpaired electrons means how much bore ma magneton 4.82 bore magneton yeah yeah so that means that option b makes sense option b is the correct answer check it out everybody check it out i'll move away please go ahead check it out yes option b is the correct answer got it done done got it clear chalo i'll be sending you the pdf in the telegram channel so don't forget to join the telegram channel guys very important okay Okay, now let's understand crystal field theory, shall we? Let's do it, guys. Chalo. In case of crystal field theory, as I was telling you, what happens is, uh, so we have learned about balance bond theory, right? Yeah. In crystal field theory, what we consider is we consider the ligands to be point charges. Yes, we consider the ligands to be point charges. And what are ligands? Ligands have a negative charge. Do you see here? Do you see here that they have a, a negative charge? So I'm going to write that down here that ligands are treated as are treated as point charges. Okay, are treated as point charges. All right. Yes. In case of anions or dipoles, in case of neutral molecules. Yes. If the ligand is negative if the ligand is negatively charged you will consider it to be a point charge yes so i'm writing that down as point charges in case of anions in case of anions okay but if the ligand is neutral like nh3 h2o then what do you do now what you consider is in case of in case of neutral molecule it is considered as it is considered as dipole okay you get my point so what did i say in crystal field theory see we did not do that in valence bond theory we did not yes we did not in valence bond theory we said that the metal what it does is the metal empties its orbital then it hybridizes and then it gives uh, gives it to the ligand that yes come you can fill up the rooms right in crystal field theory, the ligand which is negatively charged, that is anion, that is Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, F minus, these ligands, they are considered to be point charges. But if the ligand is neutral, then we consider this to be a dipole. All right. Now, do you understand that if the metal is positive and the ligand is anionic, the ligand is negative, then what will happen? There will be electrostatic interaction. One is positive, one is negative. What One, one is negative. What do you expect? You expect that there is definitely some electrostatic interaction. Don't you think so? Don't you think so, everybody? I think so. I think so. Okay. Now, let's understand this a little better. Okay. Now, let's understand this a little better. So, this is what I, this is what I told you. Okay. This is what I told you. See, if it, is, if it is a point charge, then what will you consider it to be? Point charge if it is anion. Point charge in case of anion. Dipole if ligand is neutral if ligand is neutral then you consider it to be dipole so this is the first postulate of cft cft is crystal field theory got it clear awesome now let's understand that what happens is in case of a d orbital in case of d orbital we know that there are five rooms that are present right in d there are five orbitals that are present that is d x y d y z dzx and dx square minus y square dz square right so there are five orbitals these five orbitals my dear students they are at a very low energy level okay so the 5d orbitals is special 5d orbitals in an isolated gaseous metal atom you have a metal atom you have a metal atom you have taken into gaseous state in a gaseous state, we know that atoms are really far away from each other. So, can we say that it is isolated? So, in an isolated gaseous metal atom or ion, all these five orbitals, they have the same energy. Yes, this is called as a degenerate. What is degenerate? They are very low energy. They are all like, huh? we don't feel like doing anything. They are all degenerate. They are at the very bottom level of the energy, right? Now, what happens?
happens is now what happens is let's say that a ligand is approaching okay understand it with a story let's say that you your mom dad your uh, let's say that you know your sibling all of you are just sitting chilling at home you are just going by your normal day to day activities every day right you are all like you know chilling like the energy is absolutely fine at home but then you hear that oh guests are coming who is coming mama mommy chacha chachi uncle aunty you know grandparents somebody is coming to your house what will happen there will be excitement in the house there will be excitement in the house what is excitement excitement is basically energy level high right energy level high so see this is what happened all the d orbitals which was here they got up a little bit see the energy rose yes they they increase there is an increase in the energy yes there is an increase in the energy so they have all come here now what happens let's say that it's not your uncle auntie it's not those relative who are going to come and ask you that oh why didn't you take me to why are you not studying biology but it's actually your grandparents now you love your grandparents but your parents are like oh my god now my mom and dad will come and ask me that why have you kept the flower vase there why is the light on why did you not switch off the uh, switch off the fan yes so your parents are now scared your parents are like yeah yo my mom and dad are coming my mom and dad are coming i have to clean the house i have to be very careful i have to do this i have to do that so what happened your parents energy rose even higher see <laughs> your parents energy it rose even higher but when you got to know that oh grandparents are only coming no so you are like ee hee hee we will get money we will get gifts so your energy came down you are like bus chill everything is sorted grandparents are coming what more do i have to ask for i am very happy you are getting getting it what is happening here first of all all of them had very low energy yes all of them had very low energy then what happened when the guests were approaching there was certain excitement everything got up once the once you got to know that who is actually coming it was your parents who got scared of the uh, who got scared of grandparents and their energy levels rose up whereas your energy level it came down so you got my point what is happening and this is what happens in crystal field now what happens is because of unsymmetrical or asymmetrical field of ligands ligands are approaching ligands have asymmetrical field because of this the degeneracy of the d orbital is lost now the d orbitals are not like oh, i don't want to do anything i don't have any life goals they're not like this now they're like whoa oh, excitement let's let's show some excitement so splitting happens splitting happens see how the splitting happened between your parents and you right the moment you got to hear that grandparents are coming you are happy you're like ah oh, chill only grandparents are coming is fine But your parents are like, you, you have to clean the house, have to cook for people. <gasps> Their energy got up. Understood? But it also always depends on the nature of the crystal field. Of course, you understood, right? What if it was not? What if it was not your grandparents? What if it was some uncle and auntie who you don't really like? Then what will happen? Your energy level will go up, and maybe your parents' energy level will come down. Got my point? Yeah. so this is what happens here okay this is what happens here now let's understand that what are the you know the different orbitals how do we call them see dxy dyz and dxz do you know what these are called as these are called as non axial these are called as non axial because none of them are on the axis do you see none of them are on the axis see they are in between the axis they are in between the axis okay and these are called as axial axial orbitals are dx square y square and dz square these are axial orbitals why because see they fall exactly on the axis do you see x y sorry x y see z square see z square see it's right here on the z axis so these are axial and these are non axial now what happens here now imagine if the ligand is approaching from the axis right on top of the axis what will happen these two will be like hey you right on my head energy level goes up yes Go getting it and the non axial ones like oh i am safe it's only hitting the axial ones their energy level will come down getting my point and this is exactly what is happening so let's check it out see what is happening here yes this was your free metal atom the free metal atom had its five orbitals that was dxy dyz dzx dz square and dx square y square right these are the orbitals 
the moment it knew that okay ligand is approaching excitement happened so the energy level went up so now you have dxy dyz dzx dz square and dx square y square okay all right the metal atom was surrounded by the crystal field now then what happened was then what happened now this be very careful everybody please check this out here please check it out here see what i'm telling you here now do you see that here there is a central line an axis or a principal line here this principal line that means the metal atom was here the free metal atom was here do you see the free metal atom was here from here it rose so this line or this axis is called as barry center what is it called it is called as barry center all right yes okay now what happened from here from here what happened the axial ones their energy went above right the axial ones they got to know that oh the ligand will come and attack right on our head so their energy levels went up yes okay so the energy levels went up but in comparison to who in comparison to who the energy level went up it went up in comparison to the three non axial orbitals that you had hence we can say that 3 by 5 in comparison to the three non axial orbitals out of the five these two their energy levels went up so 3 by 5 getting it getting it guys okay now i am also saying that dxy dyx and the dzx their energy levels came down in comparison to who in comparison to those two on the top that is in comparison to the two axial orbitals their energy levels are down so can i say that it is 2 by 5 yes i can yes i can okay and you might ask that ma'am there is also something like you know delta o is written here do you see this delta o what is this delta o you might want to ask me right so let me tell you that this delta o my dear student is the ligand field splitting that is because of the ligand the field splitting that happened that is that is delta o what did i say it is ligand field splitting yes and it is a measure it is a measure for the strong or weak field weak field that the ligands of a complex that the ligands of a complex create so basically what we failed to explain in the in the vbt now we are able to explain here now we can understand which one is a strong field ligand which one is a weak field ligand because we can see that here we are talking about the splitting so if there is a strong field ligand the splitting will be more if there is a weak field ligand the splitting will be less are you getting my point yes very good very good very good okay now let's talk about the two different types of ligand which we have been talking about for some time that is weak field ligand weak field ligands they create less crystal field splitting yes they create less crystal field splitting why they don't have the capacity only to scare the scare the metal no <laughs> so the splitting is less okay strong field ligand they create more crystal field splitting got it clear all right okay moving on now here we have something called as the spectrochemical series which is very 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 important and this has been experimentally determined based on the absorption of light by complexes with different ligands okay let me write that down also here okay let me write that down it is an experimentally 
determined determined series based on the absorption of light by complexes with different ligands now in this series we see that the anionic ligands they are actually the weakest not all of them but they are most of the time they are the weakest you see i minus br minus scn minus cl minus s2 minus f minus oh minus c2 o4 2 minus all of them are weak field then comes h2 ncs edta which are okay and then comes the stronger ones that is nh3 e n cn minus and c o so this is the spectrochemical series and from here you understand that these are the weaker ones these are the okay ones and these are the very strong ones get my point everybody yes do you understand this this is easy peasy this is easy peasy yes now let's move on okay let's move on and let's understand that how for d1 to d3 complexes yes for d1 to d3 complexes how does the um, you know how does the filling of uh, orbitals or filling of electrons it actually happens okay let's let's check that out guys let's check that out here okay just a second just a second yeah All right, guys. Okay, so let's just say that once again you have all the five orbitals, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is your d x y, this is your d y uh, z, and this is your d x z. Then you have d z square, and then you have d x square minus y square, right? Okay. Now what will happen? Let's just say that this is your d one. This is d one we are talking about. So from here, what will happen is let's see. the energy will rise up isn't it the energy will rise up you will have two here this is the axial ones this is your eg i will tell you that why this is eg and why there is t2g and then we will again do something where it will be t2 and e we will i will i will explain you that also but now listen understand that this is eg and this is your three non axial ones these are t2g okay this is t2g this is your dxy dyz and dxz okay all right and this is your dx square minus y square and dz square okay so what will happen is that this electron that is there it will actually come here it will actually come here now you might ask that why am i am here why is it not going up to the eg Okay, tell me, Bacha. Let's just assume that you have cleared your IIT, you have cleared your JEE exam, yes, and you have got the dream college and the dream seat and the dream, uh, you know, uh, dream branch, everything, right? Now you're going to the hostel, yeah. <laughs> you have gone to the hostel, and the warden in the hostel says that ah, uh, there is a room that is available in the second floor, and there is a room that is available in the ground floor. Which one will you choose? which one will you choose you'll choose ground floor no because if you choose second floor then every time you'll have to come down if you want to fill up your bottle you'll have to come down you want to go to the class you have to come down you want to buy something from the canteen you have to come down you want to buy something from the stationery you have to come down right would rather just stay in the ground floor does that not make sense 
So this is what will happen. Okay. Now if we have D2, if we have D2, same thing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And then once again the energy will go up. This will be EG. This is your EG. And here the energy will come down. So here you will have T2G. Okay. Now let's just say that if you have two electrons here, both of them will come down here. One, two. Yes. Why? Once again ground floor we will fill it up first. No. Yes. Now if it is D3, if it is D3, then what will happen if it is D3? I am just drawing it with a different color so that you understand. If it is D3, then this one will also come here. Yes, this one will also come here. Are you getting my point what I am trying to say here? Yes, are you getting it? So this is how the filling of the orbitals will happen in case of D1 to D3. Okay, alright. Yes, everybody understanding? Now, imagine there is a fourth electron. Now there is D4, fourth electron. Where will the fourth electron go? Will the fourth electron still prefer to occupy the ground state but there is no ground, there is no single room occupancy left. So now let's say that you are the fourth person. There were three hostels, there were three rooms in the ground floor. One, 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 everybody filled it up. Cool. Everybody filled one room, one room, one room. But there is a suggestion that the warden is giving you that beta, you can either go to the second floor and occupy the whole room by yourself or you can choose to share the room in the ground floor with someone. What would you do? If you don't have to come down often and you are that person who likes their privacy more, you'll be like, warden sir, I'll take the second floor. But if you are someone who does not, you are lazy, you don't want to get up and come down and get up and climb down, you don't want to just climb up and climb down, climb up and climb down the whole day, right? So what will you choose? You'll be like, sir, give me the ground floor only. I'll share it with someone. Ta-da! And this is the analogy for your next constant. Now, understand. Here, do you see that there is a delta O and there is P? What is this P? The P is, my dear students, pairing energy. The P is pairing energy. If the splitting is less, Okay. If the splitting is less. Now, let's just say that you don't have to use the staircase to go second floor. You have a lift. If you have a lift, then what happens? Splitting is less. The energy that you are going to spend climbing up, climbing down, climbing up, climbing down is very less. So, you don't mind, right? You would require your privacy. You would want to use your privacy. So, what will you do? You'll be like, sir, 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 I'll take the second floor. So, if the splitting is less than the, if the delta O, that is the splitting is less than the pairing energy, the electron will go to the EG, okay? The electron will go to the, electron will go to the higher energy state of this, higher energy state of this, okay? That higher energy state where there was this axial ones, yes, that's where it will go, right? Like, like here, see, do you see? It has gone to EG. But now, there is no lift. You have to climb up and down, climb up and down, climb up and down. What will you choose? You'll be like, no, sir, I'll take the ground floor only. See what happens? Here, pairing happens. Here, pairing happens. Now, tell me something, everybody. Now, tell me something, yes? In this case, do you see that this is a high spin complex Why? Everybody has their own room. Everybody can, you know, spin. They are like, whoa, my own room. Much privacy. I can stay here. I can chill however, I, whatever I want to do. Yeah. But here, pairing is happening. If pairing happens, then we know what to call it, right? We will call it low spin. Correct. We will call it low spin. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying here? Yeah. Is it making sense? Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now we come to crystal field splitting in tetrahedral complexes. So all this time we were speaking about delta octahedral. Now we are talking about tetrahedral. Okay. Yes. Now, tetrahedral, whenever it has come, see, again this happened, yeah. I'm so very sorry, guys. Yes. In this case, now see, you have delta T here. Do you see, guys? Do you see here? What is happening? Delta T is here. Why? Because this time we are talking about tetrahedral splitting, right? Last time it was del octahedral splitting. Ligand field splitting in octahedral complexes here. This is tetrahedral. So we are going to use delta T. Now this time what happens when this, this time when the ligands are approaching, they approach the non-axial ones. That means 
This time the relative is actually your aunt or your uncle. And you don't like them so much because they ask you weird questions. So what is happening? Your energies went up. But your parents are fine with them. Your parents are like, oh, okay, your aunt is only coming. Their energies come up, come down. So same thing again, everybody. There were five orbitals. Yes, the splitting happened. This ones, the axial, the non-axial ones, their energy level went up. But in comparison to who? In comparison to these two whose energy level came down. So what do we do? We write it as two by five. Correct. Then what happens? These ones, we say that their energies came down. With respect to who? With respect to these three. So what do we write? We write it as 3 by 5. You are getting my point? Yes? Now see. Why do we have T2 and E here? You might want to ask me. That mom, why do we have T2 and E? Last one, we studied that there was T2G and EG. I'll tell you, bacha, what is happening here. Let me tell you, okay? So what happens here is, what happens here is actually, if you look at it very carefully, Okay, if you look at it very carefully, I'll tell this, this, this G that we studied here, no, this T2G, EG, yes, this G is actually the German word. There is a German word called Gerard. Okay, there is a German word called Gerard. And Gerard in German actually means symmetry. Gerard in German means symmetry. Now, if you look carefully, in case of octahedral, wherever you try to cut it, do you see symmetry? You will be able to see symmetry. Do you see symmetry? Everywhere there is symmetry. And hence, in octahedral splitting, we write T2G and EG. But in tetrahedral splitting, if you look carefully, if I draw a line here, there is no symmetry. The symmetry is absent. There is asymmetry rather. Which is why we have removed the delta T and delta O. You getting it? Yes. Do you get it everybody? Do you get it guys? Do you get it? Yeah. Now coming to the point that what is the relationship between delta T and delta O? So let's understand that. So we, un we know that tetrahedral complexes are actually two-third. Okay. Two-third of octahedral complexes. That means, that means the splitting in tetrahedral is less, whereas in octahedral it is more. Whatever is the splitting in octahedral, two-third of it is, two-third of it happens in the tetrahedral. Okay? Alright? Yes? So that means for one ligand, in one, for one ligand, for one ligand, what can I expect the splitting to be? For one ligand, I can expect it to be delta octahedral divided by six. Okay, all right, octahedral, right? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So, delta O divided by six, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, that means that, that means that for tetrahedral, for tetrahedral, what do I have to write? I have to write two by three multiplied with delta O divided by six. Correct. Now, for tet in tetrahedral complexes, how many ligands do I have? I have four ligands. So, okay, I'm not able to write here. I'll write it with green here. I'm writing it with from here to here, guys, okay? For four ligands. Now, for four ligands, what will I have to do? I'll have to do four multiplied with two by three multiplied with delta O divided by six. Yes, 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 right, I can do that. Now, 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 what I can do is 3, 5 is a 15, 3, 6 are 18, right? 3, 6 are 18, 4, 2 is a 8 and then here delta O. That means I can, I can, I can uh, simplify it and write it as 2, 9 is a 18 and 2, 4 is a 8. So that means 4 by 9 delta octahedral, can I write that? And that is the relation. That is the relation. So, what is the relation, everybody? Writing it down here. 4 by 9. Eight second. Just a minute. Write it. Let me write it down properly. It will be 4 by 9 delta octahedral. Yes. This, this is the relation. Okay. 
this is the relation everybody got it guys is this clear is this clear all right sure now obviously crystal field splitting theory was also not the end of it which is why we came down to molecular orbital theory and that we have studied in chemical bonding if you remember right i hope you remember i hope you do remember correct so that means let's let's we have to study the limitations we have to study the disadvantages what are the disadvantages now this theory it takes it assumes that ligands are point charges baba and since when since when it doesn't have to be right this theory follows that an ionic ligand should exert the greatest splitting effect but an ionic ligands in spectrochemical series are what weakest we saw that they were in this end of the this thing right yes it does not take into account the covalent character of bonding between the ligand and the central atom we are saying that it is what electrostatic force of attraction it is electrostatic force of attraction right so that means that we are done with crystal field splitting energy crystal field theory that means that we will have to solve a question so let's solve the question guys the question is two complexes cr h2o6 cr h2o6 cl3 is co is considered to be a compound and cr nh3 6 cl3 is considered to be b compound they are violet and yellow colored respectively what is the incorrect statement regarding them okay delta o value of a and b are calculated from energies of violet and yellow light respectively will it be will it be i don't think so i don't think so delta o is delta o order will be compared by spectrochemical series right delta o will be will be will be calculated will be calculated from spectrochemical series isn't it yes so i think this is wrong this is the incorrect one that means this is the correct option now it says that both are paramagnetic with three unpaired electrons chalo let's calculate it for one yes cr is a uh, c cr h2o6 cl3 now we know that h2o is a neutral ligand so that means that uh, cr scandium titanium vanadium chromium 24 24 so 3d5 4s1 yes and uh, x plus Zero is equal to if Cl three minus so that means I can consider it to be three. So x is equal to plus three. So if it is plus three, that one gone from here, two gone from here, that means it will be three d three. It will be unpaired. Same it will be here also for Cr also. So yes, this is correct. This is correct. Option B is correct. Both absorbs energies corresponding to their complementary colors. That is obviously correct, right? delta o value for a is less than that of delta b that is also correct because we know that h2o is a is a weaker ligand than nh3 nh3 is on the stronger side of the spectrochemical series whereas h2 only comes in between right so yes this is also correct okay all of these are correct got it yes option a is the wrong one that is the correct i mean the correct answer is option a but it is the uh, wrong one okay all right now you have to identify the correct trend given below delta octahedral of cr h2o62 plus is uh, greater than mo molybdenum h2o62 plus and then there is delta o of ti h2o63 plus and then there is it is greater than ti h2o62 plus okay if i give this to you as a homework will you be able to do it because i really want to give it to you as homework i have solved enough question and i want to give you something as homework so this will be your homework i'll be sending you the pdf in the telegram channel please do this solve it on your own of course the answer is here but i need you to solve it on your own okay now let's study about the color in coordination complexes we have seen many a times haven't you seen copper sulfate dot h2 copper sulfate dot h2 it has a blue color why does it have a blue color it is a complex so let's find out that how does the color comes okay so what i'm going to do is what i'm going to do is let me draw like this like this 
and like this okay so what I can do is I can write here violet indigo blue green vib yellow orange and red okay now from here you have to understand that if if a complex is is absorbing yellow it will show you violet and indigo violet indigo color or bluish color okay if a compound if is if a compound is absorbing green color or blue green color then the color that it will show will be orange red okay if a compound is absorbing red color then it will show you blue color complementary color whatever it is absorbing the opposite of it the complementary color is what it will be showing what it will be trying to show you understanding understanding everybody and you know what we have seen we have seen that the ligands which are weak in nature that is i minus br minus cl minus the weak filled ligands what they do is they usually absorb low and low long wavelengths they absorb lower energy photons low frequency and long wavelengths okay so weak field ligand i'm writing it down weak field ligand yes what do they do uh, weak field ligand absorb absorb what do they absorb they absorb a uh, long wavelength and the long wavelengths are red orange yes yellow okay all right yes that means they show they show what do they show it will be complementary right yes so they show violet blue green okay now i'm writing it with orange so that clear distinguishing strong field ligand what do they do i'm just gonna move here so that i'm not covering it okay strong field array 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 strong field ligand what they do is check it out here everybody yes strong field ligand absorb what do they absorb this is long okay strong field absorb shorter wavelength shorter wavelength that means they absorb violet blue green they show they show what colors do they show they show red yellow orange so that means my dear students now from this chart you will be able to clearly tell me that which one shows what color check it out nh3 is a strong field ligand nh3 will nh3 will absorb check it out check it out check it out yes nh3 will oh this is COCL NH3. COCL NH35 is there. Okay. COCL NH35 is there. So it absorbs yellow, shows violet. But here see CONH35 H2O. It is absorbing blue green and it is showing red color. CONH36. See what is it absorbing? It is absorbing blue color, showing yellow, orange. This is what we uh, this is what we read, right? Yes, NH3 is a strong field ligand. See, it will show red, yellow, orange. Now, the moment you see the ligand, you will be also able to tell the color, isn't it? Won't you be able to? You will be able to. See, COCN6. CN is also a very strong, uh, strong ligand. If it is a strong ligand, it, what does it do? What does it do? It shows you pale yellow color. Okay, it shows you pale yellow color. See, it will show you yellow color. Getting my point? Yes. So, this is how the color that is there they show it okay all right now last almost we have come to the end of it bacha party we have come to the end of it bachus so just 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 note down a little bit more just a little bit more yes we are almost at the end of it ha <sighs> okay now let's understand now let's understand that what happens is okay i think this is what something that i've already explained right so longer wavelength longer wavelength is low energy where did we see longer wavelength she see longer wavelength less energy who who absorbs it weak field ligands they absorb the longer wavelength because less energy whereas shorter wavelengths have high energy 
who does the shorter wavelength who who uh, who absorbs the shorter wavelength the strong field ligands they absorb the shorter wavelength okay so that means that ligand strength is directly proportional to 1 by lambda ligand strength is directly proportional to 1 by lambda why why i've just told you i've just told you everybody yes that if greater is the ligand strength lesser wavelength shorter wavelength it will absorb right this is what we have just understood sure we have understood this also now let's understand here let's understand here one more thing that is for ti h2o6 okay ti h2o6 2 plus now take a check it out here ti titanium has an atomic number of how much titanium has an atomic number of 22 that means 3d2 4s2 okay that means 3d2 4s2 okay if it is 3d2 4s2 my dear students right now ti check it out x plus 6 multiplied with 0 is equal to plus 3 that is the oxidation state that means 2 gone from here 1 gone from here that means that ti plus 3 is basically 3d1 there is only one electron in the ground state here check it out yes now what will it do what will it do the moment it gathers some energy what is the next possible room that is available within the d orbital only it will go to the eg it will go to the axial orbital yes so within the d orbital they are moving around so this is called as d d transition what do we call it we call it as d d transition and because of this the colored compounds are available in the world we get to see the colors in the co coordination compound because of this d d transition got it now if i heat it up if i heat this up do you understand that the h2o will evaporate the moment the h2o evaporates the color is also gone why because no more. now now what is happening the oxidation state has changed h2o has gone oxidation state has changed right so now what is happening? No longer the DD transition will happen. So the color is also gone. Yes. Are you getting my point everybody? This is easy peasy. Now let's solve another color. Sorry. Now let's solve another color. It seems I saw the color and I thought that okay color. Let's solve another question. Which of the following compound is not colored yellow? Not colored yellow. Okay. So uh, let's just write it here. ZN2. Fe Cn6, right? Now Fe has an atomic number of 26. 26 bole to 3d6 4s2. Yes. Now obviously we can see that it is in plus 2 state. Fe is in plus 2 state. In plus 2 state, it will be 3d6. 3d6 that means see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Why did I? pair all them up because cn is a strong field again cn will make it pair it up cn will make it pair up if it makes it pair up that means that there are no empty orbitals for the dd transition to happen if that does not happen where will the yellow color come from it is actually a little bluish white in color okay so this is the correct answer and this is the one thing where we do not see the yellow color got it all right now we move on towards metal carbonyls everybody are you all with me guys are you all with me yes shall we start shall we start everybody Chal. moving on let's take a look at <laughs> metal carbonyls yes okay so metal carbon is now what happens here is please take a look at the structures everybody please take a look at the structures check it out here now do you see that there is only one metal and there are carbonyl uh, i mean the carbonyl ligand is like surrounding it do you see one metal only one metal atom per molecule each molecule there is just one metal atom do you see there is, here there is nickel iron chromium so this is called as monomeric what is this called as monomeric compounds of metal with co co is the ligand here no other ligand no nh3 no h2o no cl nothing only co is the ligand here okay co is the ligand here and this is called as monomeric where there is one metal atom per molecule okay 
but of course if i'm saying that there is monomeric there will obviously be polymeric also where there are more where there are more than one metal atom per molecule yes so here you have manganese and manganese cobalt and cobalt do you know regarding this many questions do come by the way please take a look at it okay co2 co8 regarding this many questions do come so please take a look at have a look at it compounds of metal with co as a ligand okay this is your polymeric where there are more than one one metal atom per molecule you get my point everybody yes more than two sometimes there are two sometimes there are more than two uh, you know metal atoms also per molecule and they have metal metal bonds as well there is a metal metal bonds as well okay all right so regarding this we will do some questions please take a look at it yes so there are two metal atoms here and then there are see 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 yes there are six and seven and eight eight carbonyl ligands are there okay let's understand the bonding here this is called as a synergic bonding in metal carbonyls okay why do we call it synergic bonding because number one what happens here is the metal and the carbon they form a sigma bond they form a sigma bond how donation of lone pair of electrons yes donation of lone pair of electrons on the carbonyl carbon on the carbonyl carbon and co is a weak base by the way so on the carbonyl carbon there was a lone pair which was donated to the metal the vacant orbital of the metal it was donated so there is a sigma bond formation here okay there is a sigma bond formation here do you see it a sigma bond formation here yes so the carbonyl had a lone pair which was donated to the metal correct okay now see what happens now there is a metal and the carbon they form a pi bond also how how <laughs> check this out everybody understand this very carefully okay so what happens is the pi bond is formed by the donation of a pair of electrons from a filled d orbital of metal into the vacant anti bonding pi orbital remember molecular orbital theory in molecular orbital theory what did we have we had anti bonding and we had bonding orbitals do you remember so here what we do is to the anti bonding pi pi star to the pi star orbital of carbon monoxide it is donated so what happened first of all the carbonyl carbon had a lone pair that was donated to the metal yes yes now what the metal did was the metal now donated a pair of electrons from the filled d orbital to the carbon monoxide so this happened and then this happened now they are forming us they, they have a synergic effect here yes so the carbon monoxide it has donated and it was also receiving so do you understand that it acts as a donor as well as a receptor and there are two interactions that are going on and with this two interaction do you understand that there is a synergic effect that is created and this strengthens the co and the metal bond further getting my point everybody yes now let's solve the question now let's solve the question so the question is co2 co8 displays j means 2023 i just told you that they ask you a lot of questions from this right so tell me one co co bond Six terminal CO and two bridging CO. Yeah, that's what we saw, right? See, CO CO one cobalt cobalt bond, six terminal one two three four five six and two bridging. These are the bridges. These are the bridges. So yes, that is the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Option A is the correct answer. Got it? Option A is the correct answer. Chal. Oh. We are done, guys. We are done, and with this note, we have come to the end of the session. Whoa, what a big chapter! We are done with the session, everybody. Here is one last question that I will solve, and there is another question that I am going to give it to you as a homework. So there will be two questions that are homework. Yes, so let's just read it. Let's see if you can do it too. When concentrated HCl is added to an aqueous solution of CoCl two, so CoCl two with this, what have you added? Concentrated HCl, concentrated HCl. that means what will happen here is let's write two hcl its color changes from reddish pink to deep blue which complex ion gives color in this reaction guys you know it you know it of course it has to be option a guys of course it will be option a right 
it will be option A. Isn't it? COCl42 minus will definitely show that color. But now I have told you the answer. How about you figure out the reaction? How about you figure out, figure it out on your own? Okay, figure it out on your own. Homework. This is also homework. So there are three questions that you are getting is a homework. And with this note, everybody, I am going to end the session right here, right now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sticking to the session. Please don't forget to comment and let us know about your feedback. If you like the session, if you think that this was beneficial for you, please don't forget to share it with your friends. Tata, bye bye with this note. I'll see you very soon and stay tuned to the channel. Yes, we are bringing you more and more upcoming sessions. We are trying, trying as much as we can to provide you with the best, best, best content. With this note, Tara, bye bye, and I'll see you very, very, very soon. All the very best. Bye.